How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we have ourselves a solderless Type-C tutorial for the PSP 1000. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what you guys see here is something that I worked on for the past three days, trying to figure out the best way to go about this project while also being able to document it in a way that I can show you guys how to do it so it's as easy to follow as possible. And many PSPs have been harmed in this video, so hope you guys appreciate it. So yeah, three days, almost gave up on each day, but eventually got something that looks nice, easy to follow, doesn't use any solder, and most importantly, looks very clean. And no, this charging port is not for data, as if you want to do that, then you'll definitely need to do some soldering, but that will be for a different video. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, how the heck am I going to do it solderless? And the answer to that is pre-soldered Type-C ports that you can get for a dollar a pop on AliExpress. Yeah, it's a bit too expensive considering what you're getting, but not like you have an option if you don't want to solder. Or maybe you do, but that is something we'll explore for a future video. So with that said, let me give you a quick rundown of what happened in the past three days. So on day one, I thought I could use the original housing of these pre-soldered Type-C ports and put it on the side. I thought, hey, the wires here are pretty thick. There's no way they're going to pass through here. So I thought to myself, it should be a pretty easy task, which in theory, it actually should be if you do remove the housing here. But we'll talk more about that at the end of the video. So I did a bunch of cutting, a bunch of trimming on this piece as well to try and make it fit, which it did for the most part. But of course, it didn't look all that great. It wasn't sound. And in my opinion, it was too complicated for any beginner to do as it requires a lot of trimming and butchering of your shell, which in my case, it doesn't meet the criteria of this video, as it was supposed to be beginner friendly and require minimum modification. Then I thought to myself the shell was already damaged, so let me try the bottom, and once again, it didn't work out too well. And by that time, it was the end of the day, and I went to sleep disappointed. And fast forward to day two, this is where I thought I could be slick, where I went ahead and grabbed a spare type C port, and basically torched it. The idea was here to char it and melt the plastic on the inside so I can remove everything, so I am left with a metal shell, which I went ahead and heat up, to try and poke out a clean hole. And for obvious reasons, it didn't work out as I didn't have any control over the heat and the whole process was very imprecise. And when doing it with the thin trim piece, all it did was warp the plastic before it even completed the cutout. So that was a no-go. Then I thought, you know what? Let's try something different. Let's see if I can actually punch out a hole. And that also didn't work out. First, I didn't have any protection on the underside. So it ended up scuffing the surface and the surface that I was hammering on wasn't flat. And all that did was leave me with a messed up cutout. At that point, I sat there and I was like, what am I doing with my life? And went to sleep. But finally, at day three, things took a turn for the best. Of course, there were a few hiccups, but with all the experimentation that I've done in the previous few days, really helped me get a proper clean cutout that is perfectly centered and easy to follow in a tutorial form. So with that being said, without going through the entire process of day three, here are the tools that I used. A pair of flush cutters, a very sharp X-Acto knife, a cheap small filing set, and finally a drill. You can use a manual one or a cheap one they can get for around $6 on AliExpress. Links for everything will be in the description down below. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, take apart your PSP. I do have a video about it in the description down below if you guys are interested. And what you want to do is first remove the faceplate, remove the subframe, the UMD drive, and finally the board on the right that houses the power button and face buttons. And what you want to do here is remove this piece right here. And how I went about it was first to get a strong pair of snippers, create a gap right over here, break this part as it's pretty easy. Basically, I grabbed it like so and kept moving it back and forth until it snapped cleanly. And basically this entire piece right here should be removed. And then I proceeded to clean it up while also filing down this plastic piece, which is what keeps your UMD from going too far. So you definitely don't want to snap it off. You just want to file it down so this area is completely flat. Once that's done, you can set the UMD drive to the side. Next thing you want to do is to go ahead and remove the shell around these pre-soldered Type-C ports. You just want to keep snipping at it, take your time with it until it's completely freed. And take extra care around this area as you don't want to snip the wires off. Next, you want to go ahead and remove the trim piece, grab your Type-C port, and some type of marker. And you want to focus on this little square right here. And it's the first one from the center, right where the bottom screw point is. Now what you want to do is grab your Type-C port, line it up in the center, and here's a little diagram. So that should give you a pretty good idea of what you need to do. You want to go ahead and mark that and grab your little drill and drill three small holes, starting with the center one. Once you're done drilling the three holes, you can grab your snip cutters and safely cut the remains. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then you want to go ahead and grab your file. I like to use the flat edge one and clean everything up. In my case, this is the result that I got by using only this piece right here. But once I do it again, I'll definitely be spending more time and using the circular tip to get a perfect cutout. Right now it's pretty close, but it would have looked even better if I actually cared about how it looks when it comes to the edges. As at that point, I was just experimenting and I just wanted to make sure that this whole process was doable by a beginner. So yeah, basically keep going at it with these two tips. And as you're doing it, every now and then double check from the front. And I'm saying from the front as it is easier and we definitely don't want to add any unnecessary stress on these two connections. At this stage, this cutout doesn't have to be perfect. It'll be optimal if you can have it fit snugly in there so it can give the port more strength once we start gluing it. Once you're done with that, we can go ahead and move on to the trim piece. So you want to go ahead and put it back on 
This time, we're gonna flip it like so, and with a fine marker, draw the outline of your port, as we're gonna be using it as a template to drill through. So now go ahead and do the same thing. Drill three holes, cut it out with snip cutters, and this time I recommend you actually put it back on before you use the file. Next, what you wanna do before you actually start filing, is to go ahead and grab some masking tape, which if you don't know is made out of paper, apply it onto the trim piece, and start filing. And one quick tip, you want to start off on the bottom and make sure that the trim piece and the shell are perfectly flat when it comes to this area, as that will be where the Type-C port will be sitting. And again, take your time with it, keep filing and checking your work until you got yourself a very nice clean cutout. Finally, what you want to do here is set aside the Wi-Fi antenna, the charging port, as well as the right PCB for the buttons. And it will also be a good idea to remove the motherboard if you're uncomfortable with doing the next step while the motherboard is in there, as you could possibly damage it when you're working on it. Personally, I didn't have to do it, but it's definitely worth removing it for good precaution. Cut these two parts out and file down this entire area. And again, here's a quick diagram. So at this point, this is where you separate the men from the boys, the ones who can solder and those who don't. I'm just kidding. But on a serious note, this is the part where you can decide what you want to do if you can solder. So first, if you're doing the solderless, you can go ahead and remove the insulation, followed by cutting it as close as possible to the bottom here, as the one that comes with the stock charging port will have the thinner wires, which will be very necessary, which I'll explain why in just a bit. However, my preferred method, if you are soldering this like I am, at least for my other PSPs, I prefer to actually keep the original charging port exactly where it is and just get two small wires that can solder onto the points here and route them around the same area. That way I can keep the original function and the off chance I want to try it out on an original accessory like a speaker. In my original attempt, that is exactly what I did. I exposed the wires and wrapped the wires around the actual contacts, which work perfectly fine by the way. I had a whole technique and method planned out for you guys, but unfortunately the wires here are just way too thick and what ends up happening is it ends up pushing the subframe, which will result in a terrible feeling squared button, as well as unnecessary stress on the display, which is the reason why I'm using some ugly buttons on this shell. I need to make sure that this method works exactly as intended without interfering with basic function. So I went ahead and slapped on an original faceplate as well as some original buttons to make sure that everything works exactly as expected. So next, what you want to do is to go ahead and strip the wires on both the original charging port as well as the Type-C port. Plug it in and try to get yourself a good idea of how it's going to sit, as it will wrap through the area that we have trimmed down and go through this little area right here, which once you do install the Type-C port, you're going to want to figure out how much wire you need exactly, making sure the wire is routed smoothly, as well as having enough slack that the connection can route comfortably between the ribbon cable without interfering with its mechanics. In my case, when I was first doing this, I cut too much and I had to resort to making a bridge using the excess wire that I have just cut off. So what does that mean? Well, two things. Well, for starters, give yourself more slack than you actually think you need. And if you do end up screwing up like I did where you cut too much, it is definitely still recoverable by bridging the gap using the excess wire that you have just cut off. And yes, still without a soldering iron, if that wasn't obvious. So for those who are working with wires for the first time, you need to figure out how to strip a wire there are many different ways you can go about it. You could possibly use a flush cutter and slowly go around it until the insulation is weakened. I personally use my teeth, or you can use a wire stripper tool that you can get fairly cheap. Once you're done with that, you'll usually have a frayed wire like this. So you want to go ahead and make sure it's tight by twisting it like so. And then there are two ways of combining these two. With the first method, you can twist the wires together like so, which will give you a nice tight solid connection, but it will look ugly. So what I recommend you do is that you fold it onto itself like so before you insulate it, which you could either use some very small shrink tube or some capped on tape. The other method is hard to capture on camera, but it's not recommended as it's usually used with soldering. So once again, here's a close look at what I have. So these are the connections. I really don't recommend you end up with what I have here, as you can't forget that this wire will be sandwiched right between the ribbon cable and the UMD drive itself, which will want the least amount of material in this area to allow the UMD drive to move freely once you fully close it back up. And one last time, to make sure that you have a proper installation, there are two ways they can tell. One is that this little plastic pin piece can sit comfortably through the opening of the midframe, ensuring that the frame is sitting properly without the wires here interfering with the UMD drive. Now, of course, if you don't care about the UMD, you can just leave it as is. Otherwise, if you're looking to use it, make sure that the wires are hovering ever so slightly above it so the actual sensor when it's moving back and forth has nothing interfering with it. And here's one last look on how I have everything routed. First, you have the Wi-Fi cable, followed by the charging cable, and then you finish that off by overlaying the side PCB on top. And that is all there is to it. So now if we go ahead and test it out, you'll see that it's charging. Now if there's anything that you should know about is that this port is not a smart power delivery port, meaning it will only charge through a regular USB-A port and it's not compatible with PD charging ports. And the reason is, is that this pre-soldered port does not have the necessary hardware to send a signal to tell it that it can only accept five volts. It's not that big of a deal, it sure beats this, but do stay tuned if you can solder, as we will have a video in the future where I'll be doing just that, having a smart port that can charge with power delivery or regular USB, as well as wiring the data lines and quite possibly the audio lines through this port. So we'll see about that. And again, I'm hoping that video will be way more organized than this one. 
as this video is kind of a challenge that I just put on myself to see if I can make a tutorial for those who don't have the option of solder. And in the end, thankfully, after a bunch of experimentation, not only I have a precise method on how to get a clean cutout, but also managed to get you guys a solder-free option. Which, who knows how long this will last, as if you cannot find these ports being sold online, then you might be out of luck. However, that being said, I do plan to have a tutorial that will teach you how to solder, as well as a video testing out and experimenting this tube of solder paste that comes with those IPS displays for the PSP1000. I think there's a lot of potential here, I haven't seen any experimentation videos out there, so I'm definitely very interested to see how strong the connections can be, and if it's actually a viable option to use for those who don't want to touch a soldering iron. And that is pretty much it for this video, so hope you guys have enjoyed it and learned something new. As always, if you need any help, I'll be in the comments as well as in Discord. And if you're done watching this and you want to add something else to your cart, maybe watch this video about a solderless method for sound reactive LEDs for all PSP models, which you can find right over here.